Can you feel it? A sense of foreboding hangs in the air. Christians of all stripes are now experiencing a sort of existential dread as we contemplate the future. It isn't merely the leadership of the Pope, the confusion of having two bishops in white in Rome, nor is it both of their role in the condition of the world at present that is causing this existential dread. It is obviously the events of the City of Man, which we are now watching unfold, at least on the day that this podcast is available to the public. We all, all of us, learned a valuable lesson, taught by our blessed Lord in Scripture, and we learned it the hard way. He said both simultaneously, put not your faith in princes, and he said to give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. We are not to trust Caesar, to put all of our hopes in Caesar and any variation of him, and yet many of us, virtually all of us, did. Now as the tides or seasons in the city of man change, we see how that doesn't necessarily work out, and just how wise the words of our blessed Lord really are. You know, we should all listen to Christ more than we do. We really should. The church obviously commands us to listen to Christ, but we aren't very good at it. Instead, we listen to the prophets of the world, who promise us that things really are going to go the way we want them to, that there are warriors in the city of man working to set things right. Call him, to borrow a phrase from the channel Restoring the Faith, R-1, and the myth that there is a move to save man afoot. The only work to save man is that of Christ, not of these odd prophets of Caesar. Many of us sought escape in the promises of this prophet, and look where we are now. I never bought into that stuff myself, but many did, and it is understandable how that can happen. You will never hear a negative word from me on that one, at least here, but it is time to accept the truth of the state of the world now. And that is that things are going to get bumpier and less and less welcome from here on out. And as I proceed, I want to cons- you to consider the words of Fulton Sheen. Evil may have its hour, but God will have his day. Some of you will hear this and scoff, saying that I am having the typical myopic vision of someone from where I hail from. That is not true. Most of us have this odd sense that things are getting very, very strange right now, and that something is approaching. We've had this sense for months, if not longer, but it now feels imminent. Some of that is the uncertainty of the path of head. The city of man has certainly turned in such a way that it no longer is in our favor even remotely, though... I would hazard to say that it hasn't been in our favor at all, and hasn't been in any of our lifetimes. At best, we have a, we've had a reprieve from the particularly nasty swings of the past few decades, at least as far as Caesar is concerned directly. But even then, things continue to degrade. The present pontificate truly ascended in this same time, reaching all new heights of the love of the world, and especially his partnership with the real would-be Caesars. The infrastructure of the beast is truly being laid down and has been in the past few years especially. We saw the Amazon Synod include many partners from outside the church for a meeting that was ostensibly about the sacramental needs of Catholics in remote places. We saw the elevation of the Paki Mama, which was also done with some of those same uh, people. We see it now, with both Benedict and Francis being supposedly subject to the solution to the present situation. I received numerous emails about that, and there isn't really much more to say, other than that the bishop from Kazakhstan has taken the brave position to remind you of the Catholic position on what the USCCB and Francis have said. The bishop from Kazakhstan, named after the great Saint Athanasius, but whose name I can't utter here for whatever strange reason, has said that the Catholic position is that this solution comes from Moloch and Satan and cannot be accepted. Even the bishops side with Caesar on this, leaving us mostly alone with very few shepherds. What we are witnessing is something that Vigano has written at length about. The late Malachi Martin also spoke at length about this. Vigano's language is too spicy, but Malachi Martin had a different term for what we are witnessing here, and he called it a superforce, which was a combination of clerical and ecclesiastical men and servants of Caesar, who had joined together to promote the Novus Ordo Seclorum. He linked this concept to the most iconic scene from his novel Windswept House, but in truth this was evident in the, mo- the must-read book- books that he wrote before then, The Final Conclave and The Vatican, as well as his strictly non-fiction work, The Keys of This Blood. Martin described it in this way in his time, and his focus was on the papacy of John Paul II and the issues he was dealing with in his time. This is a short excerpt from Windswept House, cleaned up just a bit for this place. Quote, Most frighteningly for Pope John Paul II, he had come up against the irremovable presence of a malign strength in his own Vatican and in certain bishop chanceries. It was what knowledgeable churchmen called the superforce. 
Rumors, always difficult to verify, tied its installation to the beginning of Pope Paul VI's reign in 1963. Indeed, Paul had alluded somberly to the smoke of Satan which had entered the sanctuary, an oblique reference to an enthronement ceremony by servants of the Fallen One in the Vatican. Besides the incidents of diabolic, we'll say McCarrick incidents, rites and practices, was already well documented among certain bishops and priests as widely dispersed in Turin and South Carolina. These acts, in a ritualized sense, are considered by professionals to be the culmination of the fallen angel's rites. End of mostly quote. Again, I had to clean it up a bit, but I didn't change what he was meaning. Is the state of things we're witnessing now a result of that sort of thing, to say it mildly? Maybe, maybe not. The real plot of the novel details the allying of the church from its very highest offices, the forces of Caesar, and an attempt to turn the papacy towards the ends of those men. That was the plot of that novel, and we are definitely seeing it plain now. In fact, something like 95% of the major and minor characters in that novel are just renamed people from real life, including, lately, some of the most prominent people who are leading the work of starting all of civilization over again due to the present situation. There is a key out there of the characters in the Windswept House and their real-life counterparts, and Malachi Martin swore that the plot was real, and that he was just telling it in a quasi-fictional form what was the purpose of everything that he saw in the church in his time in the late 1980s and 1990s, but in reality, that book is almost a roadmap for where we are in the church and outside the church as well in our time. And I've got a link to that key online if you want to see it. Some of the names will be very familiar to you. Vigano used different language to describe the condition of the church and its relationship with Caesar. Given that 25 years or more have passed since the publication of Windswept House, that is understandable. And the context has surely changed since that time. I'm reminded of his October interview with LifeSite where he said this, quote, it appears today that the Holy See is being inundated by the adversary. I speak as a bishop, as the successor of the apostles. The silence of the shepherds is deafening and upsetting. Some bishops even prefer to support the Novus Ordo Seclorum, allying themselves with the positions of Bergoglio and Cardinal Perelin, who, as a frequenter of the fates held by Caesar, has lovingly served Caesar, like so many others. End quote. Here, Vigano refers to the opinion makers and those who should be but haven't been working for the common good, which is what the church says is the role of those who operate the city of man in a normal, sort of morally ordered world. Thus we see the church in partnership with strange programs and operations in the world, all that make very little sense from a Catholic sense, but in reality have been going on for many decades. They've only accelerated and become more open in the Francis Pontificate. Paul VI and John XXIII, in their own ways, partnered with Caesar, and now that work is bearing real fruit in the church today. Recall these words of St. Paul in his letter to the Ephesians. For our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of this world of darkness, against the spirits of wickedness in the high places. We stand at the dawn of a new period for many people in many places. It is best to know what the landscape is, and it is best to tackle your sins that dominate your life. Get closer to the sacraments, and if you still haven't taken on the five first Saturdays devotion as requested by Our Lady of Fatima, then it is time to do so. It is long past time to do so. You only need to observe the devotion one time in your life, so please consider starting it at your next earliest convenience. I have videos on that devotion on my channel, and it may be time to do another one, so please let me know if I should make another pitch for the five first Saturdays devotion. They are one of the means Our Lady gave us to engage the darkness that we see in the world today, and so few Catholics take advantage of the graces that flow from the devotion. In closing, I'll say that sorry this podcast isn't the events of the day in the church type of episode. I think you understand why I deviated from the usual schedule just a little bit, and I do think there's a very good chance that most of us are being a little just too, I want to say, worked up right now. It could very well be the case. It's happened before. But please, any way that's, as that this goes, please hang in there and cling to the faith and trust in the Lord, for Christ is King. And we as Catholics must work for the social reign of Christ the King. That is our commission as Catholics, and it is high time we lived up to it. Thanks for listening, and a special thank you to the patrons of this channel, whose support keeps this work going. It is appreciated. And anyway, as always, pray for the Church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.